Hello guys, so welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to learn on subtopic 11.3 which is the types of immunity. So you have learned what is immunity, what is the immune system, what is immunization, the antigen, the antibody. So you have known all that. So now let's look at the types of immunity. Okay, get a pen and paper ready and let's do this. Now let's look at the learning standard. Learning standard here is that uh, you should be able to communicate about the types of immunity, passive and active immunity. What are they, the examples and so on. Okay, and then compare and contrast the passive immunity and also the active immunity. Okay, um, yeah, so this quiz you can do on uh, quizzes. I will put the link below. So you can do this before you uh, begin the chapter. Okay, to test whether you remember or not uh, when you learn in Form 1 or Form 2, you learn science. Okay, there's a chapter on immunity, immune system. I think it's in Form 2. So, uh, you check on that. If you can answer that question, then you will be able to actually follow this topic. Yeah. Okay, there are two types of immunity. The active immunity and also the passive immunity. Active immunity means that the lymphocyte produces their own antibodies as a response to stimulation by the antigens. Okay, passive immunity means that the body receives the antibodies from external source. Okay, they don't produce their own antibodies. Now, both these types of antibodies or immunities can be naturally or artificially acquired. Alright, so natural and artificial. We will look this in detail in the next slides. Okay, now, um, now let's look at active immunity. Active immunity is when the antibodies are produced naturally by the lymphocytes, correct? Now, the active immunity usually remains for a very long time. And passive immunity is when the body does not produce its own antibodies. Okay, and they don't persist. They can only be uh, short term. They are not long term. Okay, so this uh, natural, active and passive, they have natural and also artificial. Okay, natural active immunity, they are acquired after an individual recovers from an infection. Okay, artificial active immunity is when the individual acquire from vaccine injection. Okay, the passive one naturally is through breastfeeding or from the mother during pregnancy. Okay, and artificial is acquired through anti-serum injection. Okay. Okay, now let's look at natural active immunity. Okay, naturally acquired active immunity is actually acquired after a person recovers from an infection. Okay, example is measles and chickenpox. Now, uh, when a person is actually infected by a disease or pathogens, the lymphocyte will actually produce antibodies as a response to these antigens. Okay, and then when this individual later on recovers from the infection, that individual will actually gain a permanent immunity against the disease. Then when the individual is attacked again by the same pathogens, the lymphocyte that are stored, okay, that stored memories of the pathogen, which is the memory cells, will rapidly produce antibodies to react immediately against these antigens. So that's why it's in this graph, you can look at that, that is this, um, during the first infection, okay, the production of the antibodies is quite slow. Okay, very slow. It doesn't even exceed the immunity level. But during the second infection, the second infection, the memory cells will actually initiate a rapid immune response to produce more antibodies rapidly, okay, which will exceed the immunity level. Alright, so that's why um, the this is that's why it's called naturally active immunity. The antibodies are produced by the body, okay, naturally. Alright. Let's look at um, artificially acquired immunity. Okay, artificial acquired immunity. Just now was natural, now artificial. Okay, to, it's actually important to protect oneself from being infected by highly infectious diseases. Okay, so this individual can be immunized against the disease. Okay, immunization means uh, the process that stimulates immunity against specific disease through vaccine injection. Okay, now this vaccine is actually a suspension of pathogens that are weakened, dead or non-virulent. Okay, they're not harmful to the body. 
So this vaccine will be injected into the body. So when it is in, injected in the body, the vaccine will actually stimulate the lymphocytes to produce antibodies to fight the pathogens. Okay, now, the first vaccine injection, look at the graph. The first vaccine injection will usually result in low antibody production. Okay, this is the first, the first injection. Okay, low, very low. Now, uh, so this is insufficient to protect the individual from the disease. So a booster dose, okay, a booster dose must be administered, okay, to actually increase the antibody production to a level of uh, immunity that can actually protect the individual from the disease. So this is the, the second injection or we call it as the booster, okay, which will then increase to above immunity level, above immunity level okay so now if the uh, if the individual is now infected by the actual pathogens okay then this lymphocyte will actually produce enough antibodies and will immediately destroy the pathogens okay so examples of vaccines are like salt vaccine okay uh, for polymitis bcg vaccine uh, for tuberculosis hpv vaccine for cervical cancer Okay, recently, I think Form 1 or Form 2, Form 1, during Form 1, you have the HPV vaccine, okay, to prevent cervical cancer. So now, um, even the Ministry of uh, Health, MOH, also recommends that babies aged 2 to 3 months to be immunized against these diseases, okay, for example, diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, and many other diseases, okay, <clears throat> the babies have to be immunized you have to be vaccinated to prevent getting certain kind of diseases okay now let's look at the passive immunity okay passive immunity natural and artificial so naturally is inherited by individual through placenta okay is acquired by the fetus actually when the mother antibody the mother's antibodies will diffuse through the placenta into the blood flow of the fetus Okay, the antibodies also protect the baby, baby for the first few months after birth through antibodies that are found in the mother's milk, okay, when breastfeeding. So, it lasts about a few months. Sometimes, it depends. Some, they can even breastfeed for two years. So, then the baby will get the antibody natural passively, okay. Okay, now let's look at the Passive immunity still, but artificially acquired passive immunity. It's different from uh, artificially acquired active immunity. Active, we have the vaccine, okay, which is also acquired artificially, but it's long term. Now, for passive immunity, it's a bit short term, okay, and uh, this artificially acquired is actually through anti serum injection, okay. They cannot last for a long time because the foreign antibodies when they break down in the body they are not being replaced okay now this uh, antiserum are, are prepared from a human or animal's blood okay if you look at the diagram here how is an uh, example of how they produce tetanus okay so the tetanus in the toxoid uh, suspension will be injected into the horse okay so this anti tetanus the horse will produce the anti tetanus Okay, and uh, the serum is extracted and then it is purified. So, this purified anti-tetanus serum will be injected into individual with high risk of tetanus. Okay, and then the individual is actually protected from tetanus infection. So, that's how they actually inject the anti-serum. But it's just short term. It doesn't last you for a life, lifetime. Okay. Now, um... Next is, um, okay, here is other examples, okay, for example, snake bites, all right, rabies, okay, which actually gives only temporary immunity. If you get uh, bitten by the snake, you have to go and get a shot, correct, bitten by a dog or any other thing that gives you immediate uh, response and also short term, okay, this is our other examples. Okay, so this is the graph that you can see for the artificially acquired passive immunity. Okay, so the first injection, look at the first injection here. Now, during the first injection, the immunity level boosts up above the level of immunity. Okay, then the concentration will actually decrease. 
okay and then you if you get bitten by the snake again for example you have to get another second injection you cannot depend that oh if i get the first injection i don't need a second injection next time when the snake bite me i am going to be immune to the snake no okay, it doesn't work like that so excuse me so yeah ready made antibodies from the individual are actually injected okay into the blood of another individual so this is used for immediate protection if a person has been exposed to serious diseases okay so if you see this kind of graph so this is actually for the uh, active uh, sorry passive immunity artificially acquired passive immunity okay so the difference between uh, passive and active immunity you have the diagram actually in your textbook page 208 but i'll just go through here is that <clears throat> Uh, the main thing is that the passive immunity and the active immunity. Active immunity is usually long term. Okay, and passive is short term. And to differentiate it, to differentiate them, you have to uh, look at the natural and artificial, natural and artificial for both of the active and uh, passive immunity. So you go through that so you can have the differences. If you don't know, you can look at your textbook page 208. Okay, quiz time. Yeah, now. Okay, so question one. Figure two shows the concentration of antibody in the blood after two injections of antiserum. Now, what type of immunity is shown in figure two? Look at the graph. They have first injection, they have second injection. Okay, so this is this looks like temporary. Okay, so this should be yes, acquired passive immunity. Okay, artificially acquired passive immunity actually the anti serum where the first injection it increases, it boosts up the Im immunity level and then slowly reduces. So the second time you get the disease, you get infected, you have to take the second shot. Okay. Now, a student steps on a rusty nail while playing football in a field. What treatment should be given to the student? Rusty nail. So, rusty nail is actually, if you get infected, tetanus. So, what is su supposed to be injected? Yes, anti-tetanus serum injection. Okay, next. Diagram 1. Is a graph which shows the concentration of certain antibody in the blood okay so based on the graph look at the graph there is first injection there is second injection okay primary response and the secondary response so based on the graph what has been injected in the blood it's quite simple yes it's vaccine okay okay let's look at a hot question a newborn baby needs to receive immunization based on the immunization plan recommended by the World Health Organization, again okay, WHO. Now explain why the immunization program is required for the baby. Okay, a newborn needs to acquire immunization based on the immunization plan because the baby does not acquire immunity against certain diseases from the mother. Okay, natural passive immunity during the fetal stage. Also, after the baby reaches the age of six months, his or her uh, natural passive immunity will recede. Furthermore, the baby may be exposed to various infectious diseases. For example, measles, chickenpox, okay? So babies are unable to fight infections because they do not have immunity against the disease. So therefore, babies must be given immunization for him or her to acquire the immunity against these diseases. Alright? Okay, so once with all, you are done with all that, you need to answer questions from formative practice 11.2, page 209 to test your understanding. Okay, the questions are like, what are the types of immunity okay, that decreases according to time? And explain why. Now, propose immediate treatment that can be given to someone who has been bitten by a poisonous snake. Okay, state one difference between artificial passive immunity, immunity and artificially active immunity. Only one difference. Okay, the keyword is whereas or while. 
In your opinion, why must we follow and complete the immunization plan in Malaysia? So all that, I think you can answer that. The answers will be given in the description box below. So go and do and then you can check your answers. All right. So with that, I will end my video here. Thank you for watching and please do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.